Woo! It's gonna be good! <laughs> Season three, take one. My name is George Motes, and I'm about to make your... Ow, hit the microphone, sorry. <laughs> Don't touch the microphone. My name is George Motes, and I'm about to make your burger dreams come true. Normally, I think you're used to seeing me with a thin patty burger in my hand. Not today. Today, we're going in a different direction. Today, we're going to the thick steakhouse style burger. You can identify a steakhouse burger by its lack of adornments. We're talking about a burger that is nothing more than a great piece of meat, very thick, copious juices inside, and nothing more than maybe some onion, maybe some cheese, and a pretty simple, straightforward, sturdy bun. That's it. So you're probably thinking, you know, George, you spend so much time eating in these great dives. What makes you want to sit down at a fancy restaurant, eat a burger? This burger will probably set you back in any restaurant well over $35 to $40. But let me tell you something. People say, it's too expensive for a burger. In this condition, in this case, it is absolutely 100% worth it. Take the upgrade, people. Eat the goddamn burger. Spend the money. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that steak. I'm going to mash up two of my all-time favorites in New York City, Manetta Tavern and Red Hook Tavern. We're going to make the perfect steakhouse-style burger right here by using caramelized onions, American cheese, and a funky dry-aged patty. Let's do this. I'm hungry. I'm starving, actually. This smells amazing. Oh, fuck. Woo! The meat, the star of the show, of course. And think about it, when you're making a burger that only has a few elements, each one of those elements have to be perfect. This meat is not just any meat. This is a beautiful two inch thick dry aged ribeye that comes from a friend of mine's meat packing facility in New Jersey, Strasburger Meats. Have you ever walked into a dry aging room? It's amazing. You ready for a little field trip? Dry aged meat comes from. So, what is dry aging? Dry aging is the process of leaving meat open in a controlled environment, allowing the meat's natural enzymes to break down over time and create tender beef. Dry aging also allows for environmental impact as well. For example, molds in the room can find their way onto the beef and flavor the beef. Molds like Penicillium malgivense, Penicillium brockforti, for example. Roquefort, sound familiar? Right, it's the same thing that makes Roquefort cheese. Funky dry aged cuts are not for everybody, but I'm telling you right now, for this burger, it makes it awesome. Funky, yeah! What is this, a $45, $50 piece of steak right here? What you could do though, is blend it with some economical cuts, like Chuck, for example. I'm gonna put them together. We're gonna do a 50-50 blend. Grinding, cutting. I'm also not a butcher, so be patient with me. <laughs> I'm just a hamburger guy. If I cut myself, well, wouldn't that make good TV? Look at the marbling of that piece of steak. So I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just trying to slice up pieces. Look at that, look at that, oh my God. Hello, <laughs> that's gorgeous. So I'm basically gonna grind this into a bowl. Some chuck to the bowl. So it's kind of mixing up naturally. A little chuck, that's gonna be funky and fatty and luxurious. Ah, oh, that's gonna be good. Let's make a burger. I use something called a food ring, this thing right here. How much meat do you want? How big do you want your burger to be? I mean, six ounces, that's about six ounces. And we're just gonna press it into the mold, somewhat gently, make sure it's all filled out in there. And I use the mold because it makes nice uh, edges. Look at that, oh. oh, look at that thing. So I'm actually gonna cook it in a pan. This is the first pan, ow, oh, shit. <laughs> is it hot? Yeah, it's hot, ah. This is the first pan I ever bought. I was a bachelor living in New York City. That's the first thing I bought. I think I bought it for literally a dollar at a do dollar store. Bachelor George was fun. I sat around and read books all the time. That's how I became so smart. No, just kidding, I didn't do that. So you just sit around and talk and think you know everything. Wait, that's kind of like me now. Hang on a second. <laughs> Here we go. I did that because I want to make sure it makes perfect contact with that surface. More salt on top. I have this at about 450 degrees right now. Here we go. I'm gonna flip it. At Mineta, they take beautiful caramelized onions. 
and put it on top, right? These are, these are caramelized onions that nothing more than thin sliced onion, red wine, some butter, and some beef broth. And then everything is reduced. This could take, this took two hours to make. And on top of that, Minetta will add butter. I stood by and watched the chef make a burger for me at Minetta, and they used, I counted, 11 spoonfuls of butter. Can you smell that? Oh no, you can't, because you're not in my house. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, this is incredible. I'm now gonna put cheese on top. Now, most of the fine establishments that make these burgers don't use one slice, but two. Two slices of American cheese. That's my ode to Red Hook Tavern. The caramelized onions and the basing of the butter, that's my ode to Minetta. It's a perfect mashup. Oh yeah. Over here, over here. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, it's just my belly, not, not a big deal. Oh my God! <sighs> Buns, yes, burning it. Oh, look at that. Perfectly toasted bun, look at that. Woo! My, ah, bottom of the bun, perfect. Oh my God. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. You see that thing? Oh. Oh! <laughs> there you go. Look at that thing. You see that? You see that? Oh! Did you see that? I don't know what the fuck that was. That was intense. <laughs> that was, <laughs> holy shit. Are we okay here? <laughs> I'm waiting because I don't want to burn my face off. You want me to burn my face off, don't you? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow, what? You look hungry. Oh. Wow. I've made a mess over here of myself, but it's so good, it's worth every bit of it. Wow, it's good, right? Uh, mm, watch you listen to button the button. This is the burger that actually drives home the point that a hamburger should taste like beef. That's it right there. Everything else on here supports that. The caramelized onions, the butter, all these things are part of the flavor profile that makes you say, wow, this is why I eat burgers in the first place. This thing right here. See you next time when we go somewhere else and we eat something out. <laughs> Just, what the hell is that? See you next time when you watch me have even greater respect for burgers. It doesn't end. I like burgers a lot. Hey, my name is George Motes. Don't forget to like and subscribe to First We Feast and get more episodes of Burger Scholar right here. Where?